Okay, in this video we're going to talk about how to use the power rule to find derivatives. Um, and it's one of the basic rules of finding derivatives, so you need to get really good at it really quickly. Um, probably the hardest part about using the power rule is identifying a power function. So let's uh, show you what one of those is. So a power function, you'll uh, recognize it immediately. It is a times x to the p. So um, the variable x is actually the base that you're dealing with. Um, and then there's a couple rules about a and p. Um, so a has to be a non-zero real number, um, but obviously it's going to be non-zero, so you don't have to worry about that so much. And then p uh, needs to be just any real number. It doesn't really matter what it is. Um, so that's a power function. So they look, um, they look generally like that, but sometimes they're kind of hidden. Um, so let's look at some examples. So here's a basic one, 5 times uh, x to the 14th. Uh, that one you would notice right away. Uh, something like negative 3 radical x is a power function. Um, and you can see I'm, I'm trying to color code the uh, powers and the coefficients and the variable as I do this. Um, because we can rewrite this as uh, negative 3 times x to the 1 half. So radicals can always be rewritten as uh, rational exponents. So a lot of power functions look like radicals to begin with. Um, and you might see something like 8 over x to the 12th which is also a power function to make it look the way we want it to look, uh, we'll bring that up into the numerator as 8x to the negative 12th. So that's uh, generally what power functions look like. There is one kind of caveat, um, and it's this. Uh, a times b to the x is not a power function. So look where the variable is there. It's in the exponent. Um, so this is not a power function, but it is an exponential function. Those have their own set of rules. So you don't want to worry about those right now. Um, so let's uh, talk about what the power rule tells you. So this is for finding the derivative of a power function. So the power rule says that uh, d dx, so the derivative of x to the p, is p times x to the p minus 1. So you bring the exponent down and then you subtract 1. That's the entire rule. So let's box that. And uh, let's do an example. We're going to do three examples. So first example, y equals... 5 times x cubed uh, minus 6 times x to the 5th. I don't know why I read it that way. It's 5x cubed minus 6x to the 5th. So to find the derivative of this, which I'm going to call y prime, could have called it dy dx, but I'm going to call it y prime. It's going to be, um, so there's a constant multiple rule that I'm going to use over and over again. It's just that the derivative of 5 times x cubed is 5 times the derivative of x cubed. So it's going to be 5 times the derivative of x cubed. So I bring the exponent down, so 3, and then it's going to be x to the 3 minus 1 is 2. And that's it. And then it's going to be minus 6 times, bring the exponent down, so 5x to the 5 minus 1 is 4. And then you want to clean it up. And once you're familiar with these, you would probably go straight from the original down to uh, this answer. Um, but until then, you know, whatever. So let's take a look at another one. So we've got... Uh, y equals the square root of 3x to the 5th minus the uh, 4 times the cube root of x squared. So this is one where it doesn't totally look like power function, so we're going to rewrite y to begin with. So we're going to rewrite it as um, the square root of 3 times, now we still have the square root of x to the 5th, but I'm going to write that with a rational exponent. So that's x to the 5 halves. So it's the, the exponent of x, so the fifth goes in the numerator of the uh, rational exponent, and then it's going to be minus 4, and this will be x to the 2 thirds. Okay, so now it's rewritten with rational exponents, so we can just power rule our way through this. So it's going to be y prime is uh, radical 3, and then times, bring the exponent down, so 5 halves, x to the subtract 1 from 5 halves, so that's subtracting 2 halves, so we get 3 halves and then minus 4, and bring the exponent down as 2 thirds, x to the subtract 1, you get negative 1 third, and that'll happen a lot. So we just get that. I'm going to clean this up. Uh, I'm not going to get a common denominator and write this as a single fraction. Uh, that's something that maybe you'll do at some point, but right now we're just kind of finding derivatives. So getting used to the power rule is not a time to simplify these things. And let's look at one more. So we've got y equals 6 over x minus 3 over x cubed plus 5 over the 4th root of x to the 7th. Okay, so this doesn't look like power function, so we're going to rewrite it right away. So it's going to be 6x to the negative first minus 3x to the negative third plus 5x to the negative 7 fourths. Okay, 
So now we're going to power rule, and I'm going to do this kind of in one shot this time. So it's y equals, so I'm going to bring the exponent down, that gives me negative 6, and then I'm going to subtract 1, so it'll be x to the negative 2. So negative 6, and then x to the negative 2. And now I have, uh, bring the exponent down, it's negative 3 times negative 3, so that's plus 9. And then x to the negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. And then it's going to be 5 times, bring the exponent down, so negative 7 fourths, so negative 35 fourths. And then x to the subtract 1 gives me negative 11 fourths. And that's it. Um, so that's how you use the power rule, that's how you identify a power function and rewrite weird looking power functions so that you can just power rule right through them. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.